Hi everybody, it's Professor Michelson. Today we're going to be talking about family relationships and crime and how gender interacts with both of those things. Uh, the reading that was required for everyone is one that I uh, use relatively often. Uh, it's called Parents in Prison and Their Minor Children by Glaza Marushak as a part of the Bureau, Bureau of Justice Statistics. The Bureau of Justice Statistics is part of the um, Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice, a uh, federal agency. And the Bureau of Justice Statistics compiles data from all over the country on all sorts of things. I mean, you know, I highly recommend going and taking a look around their website. You would be really, uh, I think, interested in the number of things that they collect. One of the um, things that they do is um, an annual report on prisoners in the United States. Um, it comes out every single year and uh, gives an idea of who's incarcerated, how, um, how what we have now in our prisons um, compares to past years. Um, it's really very interesting stuff. Um, so take a Take a minute to take a glance around. Maybe you'll find something for this class or for another class. Anyway, the Parents in Prison and Their Minor Children Report reminds us that when someone is incarcerated, they almost always leave people behind. Um, and no matter how much we may believe that people are in prison for a reason, it doesn't change the fact that the people who are left behind are what some people sometimes call collateral consequences. Um, that... Um, the the person who is incarcerated is not the only person getting punished. So um, what this reminds us is that um, the majority of people who are incarcerated have minor children. Um, in fact, this report is only about minor children. The vast majority of people who are incarcerated have children at all. Um, but that uh, but that most people have children who are incarcerated. Um, and interestingly, the um, gender, as we're talking about in this class, um, actually interacts relatively strongly with um, whether or not somebody is a parent. Women are more likely to be parents of minor children. Women who are incarcerated are more likely to be parents in of minor children than their male counterparts. So I'd like you to... Um, as you read through this report and, and skim and taking, uh, take a look at the, the sort of headlines, if you will, uh, and the charts, think about um, the numbers as they um, sort of accumulate. So uh, if we have almost 2 million people who are incarcerated in this country, how many children does that mean are affected? And not only children, certainly, you know, in this report they're talking about family relationships, about minor children, but um, p other people are left behind too. Parents are left behind, spouses are left behind, friends, uh, other family members. Um, now, this is not to say, certainly, that people aren't incarcerated for a reason, um, but nonetheless, we must consider what are often referred to as the collateral consequences of incarceration and how those things are uh, sometimes, often, uh, gendered, uh, where women are often the primary caretakers of children um, before they are incarcerated. Men are uh, not as likely to be the primary caretakers of children um, before they're incarcerated, and therefore, when a woman is incarcerated, um, there have to be there are sort of more um, arrangements that need to be made, more, uh, if you will, disruption in the lives of children. Um, when a, when their mother goes away, than when their father goes away. When a father goes away, the person who cares for the children by far, most often, is the children's mother or mothers. Uh, when a woman goes away, uh, the most likely caretakers of children are, on the other hand, uh, other female family members of hers, grandmothers, aunts, uh, older sisters of the children, um, and... Uh, much, much less likely to be the fathers. So I'd like you to think about why in the world gender would interact in that type of way. What, um, what makes it so that gender would make any difference at all? Uh, you know, I would imagine that people might, um, might say, oh yeah, well that's obvious. But 
stop and take a step back and think about why you might think that's obvious, why gender would have something to do with that, and therefore what are the implications for when women get incarcerated, when mothers, if you will, get incarcerated versus when fathers get incarcerated. Um, so all of you read that report. Um, and then the rest of your readings um, were a whole different set. So I tried to put together a set of readings that would not just uh, refer to children, but also to romantic relationships um, and other, um, if you will, sort of other family relationships. There's not a lot out there about other family relationships, but certainly there are, <laughs> there's a growing number of grandparents out there that are caring for children when their own children are incarcerated. Um, and I'd like you to think about how not only how gender might play into that, but also age. Um, there's a Committee for Grandparents' Rights um, that I know about in New York State out of Albany um, that certainly isn't just paying attention to parents of incarcerated, grandparents of incarcerated, um, of, wait, grandparents whose uh, children are incarcerated and therefore they're caring for their grandchildren, um, but all sorts of different concerns of grandparents. But one of their, uh, sort of one of the things that they focus on is when a grandparent has to care for uh, grandchildren when a, a child is incarcerated. So I'd like you to think about what the implications of that would be monetarily, physically, in terms of a home. Uh, we think when we see grandparents on TV, they're retired in Florida, sitting on a beach chair, uh, you know, reading a book, I don't know. Um, but that's not the reality for many grandparents around this country. Um, so uh, moving on from the parents in prison and their minor children, the Glaze and Rorschach report, I'd like you to think about um, this concept of collateral consequences. Certainly it brings to mind the um, images of war, um, and that's, um, there are some ways that that works in some ways that it doesn't. Um, but as we think about women and men who are incarcerated, we must think about the people who are left behind because the incarceration has an effect not only on the person who's inside, but also their relationships with the people on the outside. So, um, uh, first I wanted to talk about how maintaining relationships with uh, family members uh, across the bars, if you will, um, has been shown to be beneficial to a number of different um, groups, if you will. Um, on the one hand, it's beneficial to the parent who's incarcerated or the person who's incarcerated as they are able to maintain bonds with people who are on the outside. Um, their stress levels are lower. Uh, in general, they're found to have fewer um, sort of problems inside, fewer security problems inside. Uh, as such, it's also beneficial to the staff members of a correctional facility because people are... Um, in general, happier. They're not as, um, I don't want to say, I guess aggressive is, is, is an appropriate word. Um, it's also beneficial to the people on the outside. Certainly there are um, exceptions to this. Um, when the person who's incarcerated is abusive to the person on the outside, um, whether it's children or spouse or anybody else, um, then obviously it's not beneficial to the person on the outside. But for the most part, uh, people in our uh, correctional facilities are there for property and drug offenses, not for violent offenses. Um, and maintaining relationships, even with someone who's gotten into trouble. Um, a parent is still a parent, uh, a spouse is still a spouse, a uh, loved one is still a loved one. And maintaining that relationship is, is also beneficial to the people on the outside. There are a solid number of programs that exist that encourage family relationships. Uh, there's busing programs, for example. Correctional facilities are often very distant from uh, where people were arrested. Um, uh, for example, Albion Correctional Facility for Women uh, in New York State, it, it's basically it's a plane ride. Uh, you have to get all the way up to the Canadian border. That's the farthest women's facility from New York City. Men's facilities not only go north, I mean not all of them certainly, but some of them not only go north from the city, but also turn the corner and go west and are many hours away from where people were uh, arrested. 
Um, New Jersey is sort of a smaller state, but it but correctional facilities can still be very distant from where people were arrested, uh, where their homes are. So I'd like to think about uh, what that means uh, for people who have limited resources. Um, they've lost an income probably when the person was incarcerated, so they must. Um, uh, they must deal with limited resources and travel and traveling with children as you may know is much more difficult than traveling without um, so the distance can create problems and and that leads into the worksheet that you were assigned for this class um, which is the visiting worksheet um, I you may have been to a prison visiting facility I've been to a number in my life and um, there's there's a whole set of different possibilities as you'll see from the worksheet worksheet um, where people are allowed to wait maybe inside it may be outside um, the limitations on clothing or what people can bring um, may be problematic there are many stories and many of you will see this in your reading uh, there are stories about people who get all the way to a prison visiting room and discover that um, Either they didn't check the rules or the rules have changed and therefore they have to change their clothing um, or their sneakers or they can't bring what they thought they could bring. Um, uh, I've heard of many people who end up getting a hotel room in the local area to uh, change their clothes. Um, they may go to the store and buy some you know, very simple clothes like a white t-shirt and a pair of jeans or something like that if they weren't allowed in with something in particular. Uh, certainly rules change for often for security reasons, uh, gang colors for example. Um, so, uh, and there are rules often up on the internet. Um, sometimes people will get a packet when their loved one is incarcerated about how they have to behave. Um, when they're visiting somebody. Anyway, um, whether or not you can touch the person that you are there to visit may change from facility to facility. Um, whether or not there's food in vending machines, for example, in the waiting room. Uh, where uh, there are correctional officers that are watching uh, everything that you do. Whether or not there's a children's center. Uh, so that if you bring children, uh, there's I've been to a couple of pr prison facilities where there are children's centers that have been set up by uh, groups of people who are incarcerated um, that have books and toys, um, cute little areas, small, uh, but cute little areas. Um, whether or not the, the incarcerated person can go join the children in that uh, area is also another issue. Um, you may have to watch from the outside. Um, if they are not allowed to join the children in there. Um, so uh, I'd like you to think about the implications of uh, the conditions of visiting for whether or not people visit, um, how it feels to go visit, uh, and, and certainly going through the security uh, rigmarole is something that might uh, scare children, for example, or uh, caretakers might not want to put kids through it, even if the kids wouldn't get scared. And frankly, I have met a whole lot of incarcerated people or formerly incarcerated people who did not want their children or their family members visiting them because they were ashamed um, of where they were or um, because they didn't want them having to go through all of these different uh, steps. So the prisoner jail visiting worksheet, I'd like you to um, I'd like you to think about not only what the sort of steps of it are, but how those things relate to um, or impact family relationships. If you had to go through all of these things to visit someone that you loved, would you go? Um, and maybe you would go, but would you like going? How would it make you feel to go? And we can all have our differing opinions about, um, you know, what that prison is meant to punish, certainly it's part of the role of prison. Um, but whether or not the family members um, should be an extension of that punishment. You might believe that absolutely they do. Somebody does something wrong, that the impact of it is, is, is what they get. Um, you may, on the other hand, believe that when someone is incarcerated, uh, it should be only that person who is punished and not the family members. And then the question becomes, how in the world do we make that work? Um, so, um, I think that's all I wanted to say. 
Um, so make sure you're keeping active on the discussion boards. I'm really interested to see your uh, worksheets on prison and jail visiting. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can always, always send me an email. Remember, I have office hours. You're always welcome here uh, to, uh, to come in to see me if you have questions or if you'd just like to touch base. I miss seeing you if I'm uh, only communicating via this uh, camera over here. All right, so have a great day, and I will, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.